respected ulama kiram elders and beloved brothers in islam in this age of zulmat in this age of darkness in this age which is reminiscent reminds one of the prophecy of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam wherein he said badiru bil a'mal fitanan ka qita'in min al-layl al-mudlim he said hasten towards amal persevere in amal continue exerting yourself in amal never ever become complacent satisfied with the level of your deen why because he said fitnas are coming trials tribulations tests on the iman of the ummah He described these fitnas and said, "Kaqita im min al-layl al-mudlim." He said, "Like sections of a dark night." What is the underlying meaning behind this analogy or example? Is that we find that night time or darkness very secretly, stealthily encroaches upon one. There is no fixed point where you can say that now daylight turned into night time. but very very secretly till all of a sudden person realizes it is completely dark so he said like this fitnas are coming stealthily secretly from different directions and what will be the effect of these fitnas he said yusbihu ar-rajul mu'minan wa yumsi kafira a person will have iman in the morning by the evening he will have become a kafir yumsi mu'minan wa yusbihu kafira person will have iman in the evening But the next morning he will have become a kafir. And what will be the underlying cause? What will bring about this loss of iman on such a mass scale? He said, "Yabiyu dina hu bi aradim min al dunya." My ummat will sell their deen in return for the paltry wealth of this dunya. And we see it happening around us. How many places in the world? Sometimes for a hamper of food. sometimes for some medical treatment sometimes for some school education all sorts of different different reasons iman is being sold almost on a daily basis some countries south america africa jamaat have been in the last 20 30 years millions and millions and millions of muslims have become murtad those who had miftahul jannah the key to jannat are giving it away and are forsaking the kalima of la ilaha illallah muhammadur rasulullah so in such an age of zulmat and darkness for these type of gatherings to take place on the nisbat of the love of allah and his rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam my respected brothers this is not an ordinary thing this is a great favor of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala zalika fadlullah yu'tihi may yasha this is allah's fazl allah gives it to whomsoever he wants this coming to the masjid or coming closer towards deen or the desire in the heart to go closer to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is no personal achievement this is tawfiq from allah shuaib alayhi salam in the quran wa ma tawfiqi illa billah alayhi tawakkaltu wa ilayhi unib that whatever i have done a nabi of allah is saying <coughs> whatever i have done it is with tawfiq from allah upon allah i place my trust and to allah i will have to return On one occasion Daud alayhi salam addresses Allah and he says kayfa ashkuruka wa shukri laka ni'ma He says oh my Allah how should i make your shukr how should i express my gratitude to you wa shukri laka ni'ma when even this much that the desire has entered my heart to make your shukr that is your ni'mat on me that is your favor that is your bounty ان قلوب بني ادم بين اسبوعين من اصابع الرحمن يقلبهما كيف يشاء الله عز وجل صلى الله عليه وسلم said the hearts of insan are between two fingers of the fingers of rahman allah can turn those hearts in whatever direction he wants and no one can question allah la yusalu amma yaf'alu wa hum yusalun allah allah cannot be questioned insan will be questioned So he says, "Ya Allah, how can I make your shukr when even this desire to make your shukr is your nirmat and bounty upon me?" So Allah Taala says to him, "That O oh Dawood, now that you have realized this, realized what? 
يا ايها الناس انتم الفقراء الى الله والله هو الغني الحميد the no people every one of you is faqir every one of you is a beggar every one of you is totally and completely helpless upon allah dependent upon allah wallahu huwa al ghaniyyu al hamid allah is the only being that is ghani that is totally and completely independent of this entire creation and truly worthy of all praise now that you have realized this al an shakartani now you have made my shukr because this is hadaf this is the goal this is the objective of this insan in this world wama khalaqtu al jinna wal ins illa liya'budun Allah says, I have not created insan, I have not created jinnat for any other purpose except to become my slave. For this quality of abdiyat, to make is hard, to make apparent that I am the bondsman of Allah, I belong to Allah. The life of this world, the things around us, my respected brothers, that is there just to test us. Inna ja'alla ma'ala al-ard zinatan laha linabluwahum ayyuhum ahsanu amala Allah says whatever is in this world ma'ala al-ard this ma is comprehensive inna ja'alla ma'ala al-ard everything in this world Allah has made it zinat has made it attractive generally the heart of insan aspires towards these things زُيِّنَ لِلنَّاسِ حُبُّ الشَّهَوَاتِ مِنَ النِّسَاءِ وَالْبَنِينَ وَالْقَنَاطِيرِ الْمُقَنْطَرَةِ مِنَ الذَّهَبِ وَالْفِضَّةِ وَالْخَيْلِ الْمُسَوَّمَةِ وَالْأَنْعَامِ وَالْحَرْثِ ذَلِكَ مَتَاعُ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَاللَّهُ عِنْدَهُ حُسْنُ الْمَآبِ Every branch of the amenities of this world to which the heart of insan aspires is mentioned in this verse of the Quran. And Allah says, we have beautified it. We have made it attractive. The heart of insan aspires for it. Whether it is women, whether it is the mines of gold and silver of this world, whether it is agriculture, whether it is commerce, whether it is the opulence and the wealth of the world that is stretched out in front of you. Allah says all this has been beautified has been made attractive to insan hubbu shahawat and then Quran places one label upon all this zalika mata'ul hayat dunya all this is mata what is mata Imam Ismail rahimahullah was a great scholar of Arabic grammar if you look in the lives of the salafi salihin if you look in the lives of our pious predecessors, we cannot imagine the extent of khidmat of Qur'an, the extent of khidmat to the uloom of deen that they did. Thousands and thousands of kilometers they would traverse in order to acquire the knowledge of deen. Nowadays, we cannot lament sufficiently over our lack of munasabat with Qur'an. That shock, that shagaf, that desire, that talab, that inclination towards Qur'an is no more there. Qur'an, our elders are saying, ek na aashna peygham ban chuki. Qur'an has become an irrelevant message for us. Put it on the shelf, Ramadan comes, we take it out. Some occasion of barakat or blessing comes, then we take the Qur'an out. But what is Allah telling us in the Qur'an? What does Allah want from us in the Qur'an? What is Allah commanding us in the Qur'an? <coughs> that concern, that worry is no more there. This is that kalam, kalamullah. We have value. We have value for worldly knowledge. Sciences of the world that is regarded as knowledge. But my respected brothers, if you look just basically, fundamentally, what is my purpose in this world? Why has Allah created me? What will give me success? What will give me fail? What will bring about failure? 
these basic, basic fundamental questions. We can go to the universities of the world, go to the archives of worldly knowledge, go with the lifespan of Nuh alayhi salam, and go book to book, page to page, with a binocular, and spend our entire lives just to answer these basic questions, what is the purpose of my creation? Who am I? Who created me? What is success? What is failure? Go page by page, spend the lifetime, lifetime spend the life span of Nuh alayhi salam, and wallah, Allah's qasam, you will not be able to answer these questions. That which today we regard to be knowledge is not knowledge. This concept or this idea that if you don't have a PhD or you don't have a university degree, then you are ignorant. This is a fallacy. What is ignorance? He who looked around him, he who saw the rising sun, who saw the setting sun, who saw the lush landscapes, felt the cool wind of the breeze on his cheeks, saw the print, the myriad colors on the wing of the, on, on, on the, wing of the butterfly, saw the snow-capped mountain peaks, saw the eagle perched on the top of the mountain, observing that ripple in the stream below, and then it swoops down, in order to catch its prey, the fluidity of its motion, the manner in which it flaps its wings, the manner in which it clutches its claws, the pointedness of its beak, the sharp gaze of its eye, the artistry in its motion. He who saw that, saw the cheetah or the lion running towards its prey, saw the perfect timing and the fluidity in the motion of its limbs, saw the proportion and the design and the perfection in the formation of its muscles for it to carry out its task and for it to proceed towards its prey at such a speed. He who heard the thunder saw the lightning and failed to see Allah, failed to see the Qudrat of Allah, failed to see the Kibriyai of Allah, failed to see that's unequivocal call that is found in all these things where this insan is invited to recognize Allah, he who has failed to see that more jahil and more ignorant than him there is no one jahalat ignorance is ignorance of Allah ignorance is ignorance of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in fact, my respected brothers, the whole world, the whole world of people who have not recognized Allah, who have not understood the oneness of Allah, who, is not, who have not accepted that Allah is my Khalid, that Allah is my Creator, who have not recognized the beauty of Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the whole world of them put on one side, and on the other side, one person, one person, his iman is so weak, there is no salah in his life, there is no zakat in his life, there is no hajj in his life. But he has recognized the oneness of Allah, has, has accepted the beauty of the personality of Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This one person for our understanding, let us say he has sight. He has sight in one eye. Why? Because his iman is weak. Deen is not there in his life. But he has believed in the oneness of Allah. At least he has sight in one eye. Compared to him, the entire world put together that has not recognized Allah is blind. It can be Einstein. It can be Newton. It can be the intelligentsia of our time. If they have not recognized Allah, they are jahil. Look at the 
sweeping manner in which Quran calls out Qul, Qul, Afaghayra Allah, Ta'muruni, A'budu, Ayyuhal Jahilun. Tell them, tell them, what is it that you order me to worship others besides Allah? To ascribe partners with Allah, to not accept the one oneness and wahdaniyat of Allah, ayyuhal jahilun. Look at the manner, in the force behind the speech. Look at the vehemence behind this declaration. Unfortunately, as I mentioned earlier, our munasabat, our link, our attachment with Quran has become so so insignificant. That we fail to realize the purport behind this. We fail to appreciate the beauty of Quran. This was that kalam. Allah's Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the early days in Makkah Mukarrama. He would recite Quran in Tahajjud Salah. The disbelievers of Makkah. <coughs> Abu Jahl. Utba. Akhnas bin Sharir. These were avowed enemies of Islam. The whole day they would plan the hurting and the harming and the maiming of Rasulullah and his followers. Their hearts were filled with the zulmat and blackness of kufr and darkness. Yet at night they would secretly gather to listen to his recitation of Quran. One night they got into a conversation. The Nauzubillah in the day we are calling him Sahir. In the day we are calling him Kahin. We are calling him a magician. We are calling him a poet. We are telling the people not to listen to him. And at night we ourselves are listening to him. If the people come to know, we will lose our credibility. So they make a pact. They say, okay, every one of you take an oath. That tomorrow we will not come to listen to his Quran. Everyone takes an oath. The next night dawns. Each one thinks in his heart that they took an oath so they won't come. If I go, they won't come to know. Such is the pull, such is the jazibiyat, such is the magnetic pull of the Quran that all three of them once again come to listen to the Quran of Rasulullah. This was that kalam that shook the hearts full with zulmat and darkness. And yet today, what is the munasabat of the ummah with Quran? This month of Ramadan, beautifully, look at the beautiful manner in which Rasulullah Sallallahu said, "Farad Allahu Siyamahu, Farad Allahu Siyamahu, wa sanantu lakum qiyamahu." Allah made farz for you. Allah ordained upon you the fasting of the day of Ramadan, and I, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, made sunnat upon you the standing in Taraweeh Salah. To listen to the Quran, one riwayat it comes for each rakat, for each rakat of Taraweeh Salah, each sajda, each sajda of Taraweeh Salah in Ramadan, Allah gives 1500 hasanat, 1500 rewards for each sajda, that is one day's Taraweeh Salah, 60,000 rewards, 60,000 hasanat, for each sajda. For each sajda of Taraweeh Salah, Allah gives you one palace in Jannat made out of red ruby. And this palace will have 60,000 doors made out of gold and silver for each sajda of Taraweeh Salah. For each sajda of the month of Ramadan, whether in Taraweeh or out of Taraweeh, each sajda of the month of Ramadan, Allah will give you one tree in Jannat. That if a fast horse rider rides for 500 years, he will not cross the shadow of that tree. And yet first night, masjid is full. Third night, fourth night, fifth night, sixth night, as Ramadan progresses gradually, the masjid gets more and more and more empty. And then once again, come back on the 27th night. Look at the loss that the Ummah is incurring. If the announcement had to be made, Stratum Masjid tomorrow, Taraweeh Salah, for every, every person that will attend underneath the Musallah, there will be 1500 pounds. 
then father, mother, grandmother, niece, auntie, everybody will be here. The masjid will be too small. Because we understand the value of mal, we don't understand the value of amal. Subhanallah, Subhanallah, Mithla Jabali Uhudin Zahaban Fil Jannah. Okama Kala Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. One Subhanallah, one Subhanallah. If it was told by every time you say Subhanallah, you'll get 10 pounds. What will happen? He'll be eating, he'll say Subhanallah. Be talking, he'll say Subhanallah. How you smile? Whatever basic speech, everything else will be Subhanallah. Why 10 pounds each time? And yet, what is the reality? What is the reality? Janabi Rasulullah said, One Subhanallah is equivalent to the mountain of Uhud in gold in Jannah. 14 kilometer mountain range in gold in Jannah. One Subhanallah. But the value of Mal is there. The value of Amal is not there. That is why the heart is aspiring towards Mal. It is not aspiring towards Amal. Every branch of worldly wealth, every branch of worldly wealth in this verse of the Quran which I mentioned earlier, Allah enumerates it and then Allah places one label, one label, ذَلِكَ مَتَاعُ الْحَيَاةِ dunya. What is mata? Imam Ismail rahimahullah, great scholar. In fact, I'm digressing. There's one incident mentioned about him. Allah had made it such he wasn't a handsome person. In fact, he was not attractive to look at at all. But his nasib was such that he got married to a very beautiful woman. So one day his wife was preening herself, admiring herself in the mirror, looking at her beauty, natural beauty which Allah had given her. So she turned around and she told him that you and I are both jannatis. So he says, How come? What makes you arrive at this conclusion? She says, every time I look at you, I make sabr, Allah will give me the jannat of sabr. Every time you look at me, you make shukar, Allah will give you the jannat of shukar. <laughs> Generally, that is, that is the tartib. They say the only time a woman will speak good of her husband is before they are married and after he dies. In between is very difficult. It's a different matter that the akhlaq and character is not there amongst us to make them speak good of us. Nevertheless, Imam Ismail rahimahullah was in the taftish trying to understand the meaning of three words in the Quran. One was mata, the other was raqim, and the third was ta'ala. Look at the khidmat of Quran that was made. Nowadays we feel time that is spent in acquiring worldly knowledge is wasted time. The time that is spent in acquiring worldly knowledge, that is valuable time. If the time is spent in deen, then we feel that is wasted time. My son will be backwards. My child will be backwards. Society will look down upon him. How is he going to make ends meet? All these questions are arising in the mind. If the child is channeled towards deen. Sayyidina Umar bin Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu was that personality He was not an intelligent person. It is said of him that he would work as a shepherd in the early days in Makkah. And the mother of Umar was exasperated with him because if he took a certain number of camels or a certain number of goats or sheep in the morning, by the evening, Umar would definitely lose one or two animals. She said, what good are you going to be, my son? You can't even look after animals. But when he placed his hand in the hand of Janabi Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he said labbaik to the call of Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah took him to those mantles of honor and dignity and status. Allah opened his mind so that up till today people study with awe the life of Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And the manner in which he ruled, 2 to 12 years of Khilafat, Islam spread to 2,200,000 square miles. 4,000 Jamia masjids were established. Umar 
became that personality where on 15 occasions, there's no time to go into the details, 15 occasions he expressed a desire to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or to some companion and on the desire of Umar, Quran was revealed. A person who couldn't look after a few animals, when he placed his hand in the hand of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that is the aql and the intelligence which Allah gave him. He became a living embodiment of the hadith of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, "Ittaqu firasat al-mu'min, fa innahu yanzuru bi nurillah." Fear the inner wisdom, fear the firasat, fear call it the sixth sense. Fear the firasat of a mu'min, fa innahu yanzuru bi nurillah, because he looks with the nur of Allah. One incident is mentioned. Qari Taib Sahib Rahmatullahi mentions in his kitab, one scholar, he said during the Khilafat of Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, one night, Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu sees a dream. And in his dream he sees it is the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Ali is proceeding for Fajr Salah. There's an elderly woman outside the masjid, in her hand she has a bowl of dates. She presents it to Ali, says to him, Present this to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Request him to distribute it amongst the companions. He goes to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa after salah. Presents the dates to him. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa takes one date, puts it in the mouth of Ali. Ali experiences such sweetness and ecstasy that he says, Zidni ya Rasulullah. Give me another one. Just then the azan goes. Ali wakes up, realizes he was dreaming. Proceeds to the masjid. To his utter surprise, the same woman with the same tray of dates he finds standing outside the masjid. She says, give this to Amirul Mu'mineen, Umar, request him to distribute it amongst the companions. After Salah, he goes to Umar, Umar places one in his mouth. Ali experiences the same sweetness that he experienced in his dream. And he said, Zidni ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, o Amir al-Mu'mineen, give me another one. Umar smiles at him and says, Lo zadak al-Habib lazidduka. That if my Habib Salasim had given you another one, I also would have given you another one. He mentions this incident under the explanation of this hadith. Ittaqu firasat al-mu'min fa innahu yanduru bi nurillah. Fear the inner wisdom that Allah gives a mu'min because he looks with the nur of Allah. En- engaging ourselves in acquiring the knowledge of deen is not a waste of time. Our understanding or perception of what is aql or intelligence and, and what is the true reality of aql and intelligence that is something else. The whole world of those who have not recognized Allah on one side and one person with Iman, with weak Iman, this person is like a person with sight. The entire world, whether it's Einstein or Newton or the intelligentsia of our time, if they have not recognized Allah, they are blind. Their akal and intelligence put together is not equal to the intelligence of this one person with weak Iman. And the, re- and the tragedy and the travesty that is facing us today, my respected brothers, is that the people, people with sight in one eye are asking the blind people to guide them. Teach us what is culture. Teach us what is advancement. Teach us how to conduct ourselves. Teach us what our home should be. Teach us what our family values. Teach us what is akhlaq and character the person with sight is asking the blind man to guide him how is he ever going to gain guidance as if we have no imam as if we have no hadi as if we have no rahbar muhammadur rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam where the poet says afalat shumusul awwalina wa shamsuna abadan ala ufuqil ula la taghrubu the suns the sources of light and guidance of the nations of the past have set but our sun our source of light and guidance muhammadur rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qiyamat will come but his light will not set qiyamat will come but his light will not set such a nabi this ummah was given and yet still we are looking elsewhere the ummah of the Quran, the ummah of Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam today is measuring its achievement in other avenues. What greater injustice, what greater oppression can there be? Nevertheless, coming back to that incident, Imam Ismail rahimahullah, 
was very interested in what is the meaning of these words. How to find out the correct meaning of the words of Quran. They didn't sit with a dictionary. Like nowadays we have groups forming. Groups. What that are going to study the Quran or commentate on the Quran. With absolutely no background or no understanding of deen or sharia. You want to commentate on the Quran. It was his understanding that in order to, to gain the true meanings of the words of the Quran. He would go to the. Bedouins, those who used to live in the desert and listen how this particular word in normal conversation is used. In the normal day-to-day -day occurrence when this particular word will be used in conversation, the manner or the context in which they use it, from that we can gain the correct understanding. So what Imam Ismail rahimahullah does, he goes and lives amongst the Bedouins, becomes one of them, waiting, when will they use these words in normal conversation? Six months pass. Imagine the extent of sacrifice that was given for the ulum of Quran. Six months pass like this. One day, while the camp is having qaylullah, siesta, one elderly woman had cleaned her pot. The rag which she used will be filthy, will be blackened. She leaves the rag on one side. A stray dog comes from the mountain, starts sniffing around the camp while people are sleeping. Someone becomes away, starts screaming, the dog has come, perhaps it will steal something. The dog in its panic grabs hold of the cloth which he had used to clean the pot and starts running towards the mountain. This woman shouts out to inform the people of the camp what the fuss is about. She says, Ja ar raqim akhad al mata wa ta'al al jabal. All three words that Imam Ismail rahimullah was waiting for when in normal conversation it will be used. Six months of waiting. There is no limit to his joy when he hears the sentence of this woman. She says, Ja ar raqim the dog has come. Akhad al mata it took mata and it climbed or ran towards the mountains. He understood the meaning of all three words in this one sentence. Pertinent to what we were discussing, Allah has enumerated every branch of worldly wealth, everything that the heart of insan aspires to and Allah has placed one label on everything, dhalika mata'ul hayati dunya, all this is mata of the life of this world, what is mata according to this woman, according to Imam Ismail rahimullah, in the correct context, mata that filthy, dirty rag that is used to clean the pots is mata Allah says the combined wealth of this world, if it takes you away from Allah, if it becomes an obstacle to your akhirat, it has no value whatsoever. It is mata. Chor dene wali jaha hai. This world is such, it has to be left behind. Nothing is going to come with us. Harun Rashid was a khalifa. He was ruling three continents, three continents. If you want to understand it geographically, Baghdad to Kashmir, Baghdad to Istanbul, Baghdad to Senegal, Baghdad to southern France. One ruler. One day he sees a rain cloud. He says, Um Turi, hey Thushit, wasa yujima ilayya kharajuki. Rain wherever you want, your rain will still be in the kingdom of Harun. Such a kingdom. Barely 48 years of age. Barely 48 years of age. Prime of his life. He is in an area called Mashhad in Iran. And he realizes that his death is imminent. He becomes ill. Physicians inform him, you are not going to survive this illness. Harun Rashid orders for his cupboard to be dug. Sits at the side of the grave. Picks up the sand. Lets it run through his fingers. Ma agna anni maliya halaka anni sultani. Ma agna anni maliya halaka anni sultania. All my wealth is of absolutely no use to me whatsoever. Halaka anni sultania. My sultanate, my kingdom, my armies are of absolutely no avail to me whatsoever. The ruler of three continents of the world, and this is his reaction when moth is staring him in the face. 
What reality is there of this world? What good is that health which is followed by sickness? What good is that wealth, the loss of which is feared? What good is that youth which is followed by old age? That youngster stands in front of the mirror. He's got his ray-bands on. He's got the gold necklace around his neck. He's got the bangles on his hand. He's admiring himself from this side, from that side. I am the one. The young girl... Her, the bloom of her cheeks were compared to the bloom of roses. The twinkling of her eyes were compared to the twinkling of stars. She thinks that she is the Zulekha of the time. Admiring herself, preening herself in front of that mirror. Why don't we realize that it is just a few moons? Just a few years will pass. How are you going to delay the onset of old age? What cosmetic are you going to use? What plastic surgery are you going to use? What Botox treatment and whatever treatment are you... What implants are you going to use? How many dollars are you going to spend to delay the onset of the ravages of time? That same young girl, that blooming cheek, will it not become the food of insects tomorrow in the cover? Those eye sockets, will not insects walk through those eye sockets? Why don't we wake ourselves up to the reality of this dunya? Don't look at the rising sun, look at the setting sun. Don't go to the places of revelry and haram. Go to the homes of, where the janaza is being lifted up. Hear the cry of the elderly father who had such hopes and aspirations for his young child. Today that same father is lifting the janaza of that same youngster. Go to the home of that widow who is crying over the loss of her husband. Then we will understand what the reality of the life of this world is. Allah says, وَمَن نُعَمِّرْهُ نُنَكِّسْهُ فِي الْخَلْقِ أَفَلَا تَعْقِلُونَ Those whom we take to an old to old age, we bring about a reverse in their creation. أَفَلَا تَعْقِلُونَ Why don't you understand? This entire humanity, relentlessly, the clock is ticking. Unfortunately, we get so caught up, we get so caught up in the glitter and glamour and attraction of this world. That this dunya appears to be the goal, it appears to be the object, it becomes everything. Like the poet says, Inna lanafrahu bil ayyami naqta'uha Inna lanafrahu bil ayyami naqta'uha Wa kulla yawmin mada yudni min al-ajali Fa'mal li nafsika qabla al-mawti mujtahidan Fa'innama al-ribhu wal-khusranu bil-amali نجدد سرورا بالهلال إذا بدا وما هي إلا السيف للحتف ينتظي. He says, "Oh foolish insan, the movement of time is something you are celebrating. New Year has come. Birthday has come. The hallmarks by which the passage of the movement of time is measured today has become a source of celebration to us." Little do we realize, كُلَّ يَوْمٍ مَضَى يُدْنِي مِنَ الْأَجَلِ Every passing day is taking us closer to our cover. Every passing day is taking us closer to that reality. فَعْمَلْ لِنَفْسِكَ قَبْلَ الْمَوْتِ مُجْتَهِدًا So exert yourself. Exert yourself. Aspire with one another. Outdo one another. Apply yourself in this dunya. For what? Not to outdo the next person in what car you are driving. Or to outdo the next person in how many shops you got. Or to outdo the next person in how big the bank balance is. فَعْمَلْ لِنَفْسِكَ قَبْلَ الْمَوْتِ مُجْتَهِدًا Exert yourself, apply yourself in acquiring profit. In advancing yourself, what is the profit? فَإِنَّمَا الْرِبْحُ وَالْخُسْرَانُ فِي الْعَمَلِ Because loss and gain is not in wealth, is not tangible. Loss and gain is, is, is in a'mal. The currency of akhirat is a'mal. The currency of akhirat is not the wealth of this world. It is said the greatest, the greatest conqueror in the annals of human history was Genghis Khan. The second greatest conqueror in the annals of, hu of human history was Mahmud Ghaznavi. Years and years of conquest. 
And finally, he decides to build a palatial home, which is a hallmark or a testimony of what he has achieved. He erects this huge palace. And once it is ready, he invites his father, Subukdin Rahmatullahi, a pious person, to come and see. See what I have achieved. Years and years of what statement I am leaving behind. Look at my legacy. We hear these terms. So he takes him room to room, shows him artifact upon artifact. Priceless heirlooms. What he has amassed over the years. What was he expecting his father to praise him? MashaAllah, my son, you achieved this, you achieved that. But contrary to his expectations, contrary to his expectation, his father remains silent. Not only does he remain silent, he is unaffected. Unaffected, totally unperturbed. Finally, this was a warrior. His whole life was spent fighting wars. He was not a person of a moderate temperament. When things were not, are not going his way, he is likely to become angry. So the rage is burning inside. The fury is building up. This man is not reacting. My whole life, my whole life, everything I achieved, I am today presenting in front of him and there is no reaction. Finally, he couldn't contain himself anymore. It was his father. He couldn't do anything to his father. So, but he had to express his rage. So what he does, he picks his axe up. And a mighty blow he strikes on one of the heirlooms, as a result of which it splinters into a thousand pieces. When he does this, then his father turns to him and smiles and says, Oh my son, you have spent your entire life making effort on that which cannot withstand the blow of one axe. Allah has not sent us to make effort on sand. Allah has not sent us to make effort on sand. Insan's purpose, insan's object in this world has nothing to do with the tangible things of the world in front of us. Allah begins his kalam, Allah begins his kitab, Alif, Lam, Meem, Thalik al-kitab, La Rayba fi. This is the book, in it is no doubt, Hudallil muttaqeen, it is hidayat, it is guidance for those with taqwa. Where does taqwa start from? Where does Hidayat start from? Where does Iman start from? Alladina yu'minuna bil ghayb. Those who will believe in the unseen. Those who will take the sword of law. The sword of negation. And apply it to everything that is there around them. Whether it is the rivers. Whether it is the streams. Whether it is the oceans. The multitudes of creations that are contained in the oceans. It is said one cubic centimeter of water of the oceans contains more living organisms than all the human beings on the surface of the earth. Six billion living organisms Allah has kept in one cubic centimeter of water of the oceans. Whether it is that, whether it is the rivers, whether it is the trees, whether it is the streams, whether it is the animals, whether it is the insects, whether it is the birds, whether it is insan moving upwards, whether it, is, whether it is the sky, whether it is the comets, whether it is the asteroids. Just this solar system in which we are living in, the center of which is the sun. It is said the sun is 325,000 times the size of the earth. The sun is a collection of gases every second, every second, 14 billion tons of hydrogen gas is converted into 12 billion tons of helium gas. This chemical reaction causes energy to be released. How much energy? Energy equivalent to 500 million atom bombs exploding at one time. Every second. Flames 100,000 miles long. The sun, surrounded by nine planets, 32 moons, 30,000 asteroids, countless co co comets and meteors, all moving in constant motion at indescribable speeds. This galaxy in which we are living, it is said the sun is one star, one star. There are two billion stars in this galaxy. Some of them are millions of times the size of the sun. This galaxy is so vast, 
That if you have to travel at the speed of light from one point, what is the speed of light? 186,282 miles per second. If you travel at that speed, 186,282 186,282 miles per second, it will take you 2 million years just to finish this galaxy. And they estimate there are 500 million other such galaxies, 500 million other such galaxies in which there are so many stars, in which there are so many stars that if one second, one second was given to name each star, it will take 300 trillion years just to name the stars and that is the visible universe three percent of the universe is visible the other 97 percent known as the black hole is not even visible they don't even know what is there so vast all this move upwards all this is somehow dunya underneath the first heaven whether it is all this moving upwards, second heaven, third heaven, fourth heaven, fifth heaven, sixth heaven, seventh heaven, and the malaika of all these heavens, first selekar arshtak, from the earth to the arsh of Allah, everything is dead. Nothing lives, nothing dies, nothing advances, nothing declines, nothing benefits, nothing harms, nothing rises up, nothing comes down, except with the permission, qudrat, will, and irada of one Allah. Alladheena yu'minuna bil ghayb. This is where iman starts. To negate everything besides Allah. The door is, look at the man, Quran calls out again and again, understand that it is only Allah. Alif, Lam, Meem. Allahu la ilaha illahu. Rabbul mashriqi wal maghrib. La ilaha illahu. Shahid Allah. Annahu la ilaha illahu. Allahu la ilaha illahu. Al hay al qayyum. Hu Allahu alladhi. La ilaha illahu. It is one Allah. It is one Allah. It is one Allah. One Allah is the doer. One Allah is the giver. One Allah is the maker. One Allah is the controller. Life in his hands. Death in his hands. Wealth in his hands. His hands, sickness in his hands, advancement in his hands, decline in his hands. Allahu la ilaha illahu. Know and understand, it is only one Allah. Al Hay, living is Allah. Hayun, qabla kulli hay. Hayun, baada kulli hay. Hayun, fawqa kulli hay. Hayun, yumitu kulli hay. Hayun, la yushbihuhu hay. Lam yazal, wa la yazal. Living before every living. Living after every living. Living above every living. Living, he will give death to every living living there is nothing living that is like Allah Lam yazal, wala yazal. he was from forever he will be forever Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi sallam when he raises his hand look at the manner in which he praises is Allah Allahumma anta ahakku man dhukir wa ahakku man ubid wa ansaru man ibtughi wa arafu man malak wa ajwadu man suil wa awsaw man aata anta al malik la sharika lak wal fard la nidda lak kullu shayin halik إلا وجهك لن تطاع إلا بإذنك ولن تعصى إلا بعلمك تطاع فتشكر وتعصى فتغفر أقرب شهيد وأدنى حفيز حلت دون النفوس وأخذت بالنواصي وكتبت الآثار ونسخت الآجال القلوب لك مفضية والسر عندك علانية الحلال ما أحللت والحرام ما حرمت والدين ما شرعت والأمر ما قضيت والخلق خلقك والعبد عبدك وأنت الله وأنت Oh Allah, Ar-Ra'uf Ar-Rahim. Oh my Allah, oh my Allah. Worthy of being remembered is only you. Dhikr only for you. Ibadat only for you. The source of every help is only you. Generosity only emanates from you. You are the king. You are the king. There is no partner with you. You are alone. Fard, Ahad, Samad, one, alone, Samad. Totally, completely independent from his entire creation. La yasta'inu bi shay. He doesn't take help from anything. La yahtaju ila shay. He's not in need of anything. La yakhfa alayhi shay. Nothing concealed from Allah. La yaglibuhu shay. Nothing overpowers Allah. La yanfauhu shay. Nothing benefits Allah. La yadurruhu shay. Nothing harms Allah. Khaliku kulli shay. He is the creator of everything. Alimun bi kulli shay. He has knowledge of everything. Khabirun bi kulli shay. He is aware of everything. Ladifun 
kulli kulli shay. He exhibits his kindness towards everything. Laysa ka mithlihi shay. And there is nothing that is like Allah. This is where Iman starts. Where this heart has to recognize Allah. Ta'alluq with Allah. Marifat of Allah. Recognition of Allah. Allah calls out, Abdi utlubni, tajidni, in wajadtani, wajadta kulla shay. O my slave, search for me. Search for your Allah. Recognize your Allah. What does it mean, search for Allah? What does it mean, search for Allah? Break down the idols of the ghayr of Allah from this heart. Break down the ghayr of Allah. Shop is doing, job is doing, dollars are doing, pounds are doing. How many things are we going to make sajda to? How many things are going to dictate our life? In which direction are we going to turn? How much are we going to continue running behind the tangible things of this world? Allah's Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi said, Astaqu qail, the most truthful statement any poet said was the, poet, was the statement of Labid when he said, Allah, Allah, kullu shayin ma khalallah batilu wa kullu naimin la mahalata zailu. The most truthful statement any poet said, attested to by Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, listen, listen, Allah, put up your ears, hearken. كُلُّ شَيْءٍ مَا خَلَ اللَّهَ بَاطِلُ Everything else besides Allah is batil. Everything else besides Allah has no meaning. وَكُلُّ نَعِيمٍ لَا مَحَالَ تَزَائِلُ And every ni'mat, bounty, glitter and glamour, attraction of this world will come to an end. It will come to an end. Everything will perish. كُلُّ مَنْ عَلَيْهَا فَانْ كُلُّ نَفْسٍ ذَائِقَةُ الْمَوْتِ كُلُّ شَيْءٍ هَالِكٌ إِلَّا وَجْهَا Quran leaves out no exclusion. Everything will go. Everything will be destroyed. Sab ko marna hai. Sab ko marna hai. Everything has to die. Everything has to perish. Everything has to come to an end. Even this earth. Even this earth. Even the mountains. Even the rivers. Even the streams. They also fear their death. Ida zul. The earth. Ida zul zilatil ardu zil zalaha. Mountains. وَإِذَا الْجِبَالُ السُّيِّرَتْ يَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ الْجِبَالِ فَقُلْ يَنْسِفُهَا رَبِّي نَسْفَا فَيَذَرُهَا قَعًا صَفْصَفَا لَا تَرَا فِيهَا عِوَجًا وَلَا أَمْتَا The, the seas, وَإِذَا الْبِحَارُ فُجِّرَتْ The sun, إِذَا الشَّمْسُ كُوِّرَتْ The stars, إِذَا النُّجُومُ انْقَدَرَتْ the, 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 the moon, وَانْشَقَّتِ الْقَمَرِ Everything will die. One Allah alone will remain. One Allah is the reality. Allah has to become maqsood. Allah has to become matloob. Allah has to become the goal. Allah has to become the direction. The qibla, ruh, direction of this heart has to become Allah. We have to become living manifestation of the command of Allah in the Quran. Qul, O Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, tell them, tell them, inna salati wa nusuki wa mahyaya wa mamati lillahi rabbil alayhi. Alameen. La sharika la. Tell them, verily my salah, my sacrifices, my living, my dying, everything for Allah. Everything for Allah. Man ahabba lillah, wa abghada lillah, wa ata lillah, wa mana lillah, faqad istakmal al-eeman. He who loves for the sake of Allah, hates for the sake of Allah, gives for the sake of Allah, withholds for the sake of Allah, faqad istakmal al-eeman. His iman is complete. That is kamal iman. Utlubni, tajidni, in wajatni, wajatta kulla shay. Search for me, you will find me. If you have found me, you have found everything. If you have found Allah, you have found everything. Wa in futtani, fataka kulla shay. And if you have lost Allah, if you are living with any other motivation besides the pleasure of Allah. If Allah hasn't become your qibla, وَرِذْوَانٌ مِّنَ اللَّهِ أَكْبَرٍ There is nothing great, greater than the pleasure of Allah. There is nothing greater than the pleasure of Allah. If you are living, if you are walking, if you are talking, if you are conduct, if you are dressing, if you are home, if your business is not motivated by this goal, my Allah must become pleased. In futtani, if Allah is not in your life, if Allah is not your direction, if you have lost Allah, فَاتَكَ كُلُّ شَيْءٍ You have lost everything. وَأَنَا خَيْرٌ لَكَ مِنْ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ Allah says, I am better for you than everything. If we want Allah, if we want to recognize Allah, if we want the marifat of Allah, if we want the love of Allah, if we want the forgiveness of Allah, there is a bridge, there is a medium, there is a wasta, and that is Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهِ 
فاتبعوني فاتبعوني يحببكم الله ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم كلم محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم if you love Allah if you want forgiveness if you want the nearness of Allah فاتبعوني follow me follow محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم Allah will forgive you Allah will make you his beloved the condition is become a Muhammadi head to toe, become a living personification of Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Hadith Qudsi, Lawis taftahuni kulla baab, wajauni min kulli tariq, la aftahu alayhim illa ayyadkhulu waraak. Ya Habibi, Ya Muhammada, if they open every door and they come on every road, I will never grant them my closeness. I will never grant them my marifat. I will never grant them my recognition. I will never grant them entry into my court, except that they do not come upon your road, O my beloved, O Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. One black sahabi comes into the majlis of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He has a complaint. What is his complaint? Innakum fuddiltum alayna bil alwani was suwari wad deen ara eight in amantu bima amant wa amiltu bima amilt akuntu maaka fil jannah. He says, you people, according to his understanding, referring to the Arabs, he says, you people have been given precedence over us. With regards to your appearance, with regards to your worldly wealth, with regards to your worldly status. But the fiza and environment of Medina Munawara was such, such an effort Allah's Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa had made on the minds and hearts of Sahabi Kiram that worldly status, worldly recognition ceased to have any value. The goal was akhirat. The hadaf was akhirat. So he says, Oh Nabi of Allah, all this does not interest me. Tell me if I bring iman like you have brought iman and I do amal like you are doing amal, will I be with you in Jannah? In this world, my perception is you have a higher status. Will this apply to akhirat? The concern was not dunya, the concern was akhirat. Allah's Rasul looks at him and says, La yahummuka sawadu wajhik in amant bima amant wa amilt bima amilt la kunta ma'i fil jannah wa inna balataka al aswad la yura min masafati al fi'am. He said, Color, complexion, worldly status, dignity, honor, wealth counts for nothing in the court of Allah. It counts for nothing in the court of Allah. Go today to the European countries and see that passport queue. That American with his passport, his chest is pushed out. Goes front to the immigration counter, stamps his passport down. As if challenging, ask me any question and see. That poor Pakistani standing in the back, he's shivering. Beforehand, he's got his Pakistani passport. He doesn't know what the reaction is going to be. Are they going to send me for interrogation, send me for question? Beforehand, he's already perspiring. A day is coming. A day is coming, my respected brothers. Whether it was an American passport, whether it was a Pakistani passport, or a South African passport, or a Japanese passport, or a Chinese passport, or whether your bank balance had nine figures, or six figures in it, or three figures, or whether you rode a Mercedes Benz, or whether you rode a Renault, Wallah will count for nothing. There will be only one criteria. Which visa have you come with? As if, has your visa got the, got the stamp of Muhammadur Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa or not? Whether you are black, whether you are white, whether you are green, whatever color you may be, whatever nationality you will be, it will count for nothing. There will only be one passport, one basis of, re of recognition, and that is Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Oh my sahabi, do not worry about your color. Do not worry about your worldly status. If you have brought iman, like I brought iman, and you are doing amal, like I, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, are doing amal. Not only will you be with me in Jannat, not only will you be with me in Jannat, but Allah will give your face such nur, such light, that it will be visible from a distance of 1,000 years. 1,000 years distance, the nur of your face will be visible. The Sahabi is elated. He cannot comprehend. He says, Oh Nabi of Allah, tell me, is Jannat like this? Is Jannat like this? Is Jannat like this? Question upon question upon question. Allah's Rasul starts answering him, Yes, Jannat is like this. Yes, Jannat is like this. Yes, Jannat is like this. Eventually, Umar, Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu gets upset. He rebukes that person. You are causing taklif. You are causing trouble to the Nabi of Allah. Stop asking so many questions. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, Omar, leave him, leave him. He has shock for Jannah. 
He has inclination for Jannat. He has desire for Jannat on the desire of this ordinary Sahabi. 18 verses, 18 verses of Quran are revealed. Inna al abrar yashrabuna min ka's kana mizajuha kafura ayna yashrabu biha. عباد الله يفجرونها تفجيرا يوفون بالنذر ويخافون يوما كان شره مستطيرا ويطعمون الطعام على حبه مسكينا ويتيما وأسيرا إنما نطعمكم لوجه الله لا نريد منكم جزاء ولا شكورا إنا نخاف من ربنا يوما عبوسا قمطريرا فوقاهم الله شر ذلك اليوم ولقاهم نظرة وسرورا وجزاهم بما صبروا جنة وحريرا متكين فيها على الأرائك لا يرون فيها شمس ولا زمهريرا ودانية عليهم ظلالها وذللت قطوفها تذليلا ويطاف عليهم بآنية من فضة وأكواب كانت قواريرا قوارير من فضة قدروها تقديرا ويسقون فيها كأسا كان مزاجها زنجبيلا عينا فيها تسمى سلسبيلا ويطوف عليهم ولدان مخلدون أكواب يطوف عليهم ولدان مخلدون إذا رأيتهم حسبتهم لؤلؤا منثورا وإذا رأيت وإذا رأيت ثم رأيت نعيما وملكا كبيرا عاليهم ثياب سندس من خضر واستبرق وحلوا أساور من فضة وسقاهم ربهم شرابا طهورا إن هذا كان لكم جزاء وكان سعيكم مشكورا 18 verses of the Quran describing Jannat Rayulain as if Jannat is in front of you in that manner Allah describes Jannat in these verses of the Quran on the shock on the inclination for Jannat of this ordinary black Sahabi. What one verse? Time is limited. Just one verse. Allah says, Wa idha ra'ayt, wa idha ra'ayt, thamma ra'ayt naiman wa mulkan kabira. If only you could see. If only you could see that Jannat which I prepared, you will see bounties wa mulkan kabira. You will see a vast kingdom. Who is saying? Allah is saying. Somebody who has got a hundred pounds says, I've got a lot of money. How much money has he got? I've got a lot of money. He's got a hundred pounds. His perception of lot is hundred pounds. Someone is a millionaire. He says, I got a lot of money. How much money has he got? Yeah, who is saying vast kingdom? Allah is saying. Allah is saying mulkan kabira. The same Allah who this dunya, this entire world. Great, he said the known world today, there are approximately 200 countries. Janabi Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said لو كانت الدنيا تعدل عند الله جناح بعود ما سقى كافر منها شربة ما that if this world if this world had the value in the sight of Allah equivalent to the wing of one mosquito if the entire world had the value in the sight of Allah equivalent to the wing of one mosquito Allah would not have given the disbelievers one droplet of water to drink but this world is not equal not equal in Allah's sight to the wing of one mosquito. Not equal. If pro rata we take the wing of the mosquito just for our understanding. He said not equal. Let us assume it is equal. Take the wing of the mosquito pro rata and divide it into 200 parts. What tiny part remains for England? Then divide it further. What tiny part remains for London? Then go even further, what tiny part remains for Stratham? And then one person in Stratham who's got a few zeros in his bank balance, owns a few shops or maybe a few cars who has some investment, sits down and feels that now I am somebody. I own a lot. Like one Ali, one of our elders, he puts it beautifully, he says, what is the haysiyat of this person compared to everyone, compared to the rest of the world? Six billion insan sharing this earth. What is his haysiyat? What is his relation compared to everything else? He says, agar apne haysiyat ko samajna, to office mein bed kar mat socho, beitul khala mein bed kar socho, ke mere andar se kya nikal raha hai. If you want to understand how important and relevant you are, don't sit in your office and think about it. Sit in the toilet and think about it. That what is coming out from me? Allah ibn Taymiyyah rahmatullahi used to say, Ajibatu liman kharaja min majra al-bawli marrataini kayfa yatakabbar. It surprises me that that individual that passed through the passage of urine twice, insan has to pass through the passage of urine twice. 
He says that individual that passed through the passage of urine twice, how arrogance and pride still comes into him. How does he still feel that I am somebody? What is the hasiyat? What is the value? فَلَا نُقِيمُ لَهُمْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ وَزْنَا فَلَا نُقِيمُ لَهُمْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ وَزْنَا Janab Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi said, On the day of judgment there will be some people from my ummah. They will be brought, their wealth will be brought, their buildings will be brought, their investments will be brought, and they will be placed with their investments on one pan of the scale. And on the other pan of the scale, a tiny grain of mustard seed will be kept. The pan containing the mustard seed will rush downwards because of its weight. And this person with all his pomp and all his glitter and all his worldly possessions will shoot up into the air. The angel will announce, فَلَا نُقِيمُ لَهُمْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ وَزْنَا Today he has no weight or no recognition whatsoever. On the other hand, on one occasion, Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiyallahu ta'ala who is walking. The wind blows his kurta lifts up. When his kurta lifts up, his shins become exposed. Ibn Masood radiallahu ta'ala anhu, his shins were very thin and insignificant. Few of the companions seeing that they begin to laugh a little bit. Allah's Rasul Salaam says to them, why are you laughing? They said, we observe the shins of Ibn Mas'ud that it is so thin. Allah's Rasul Salaam says, وَالَّذِي نَفْسُ مُحَمَّدٍ بِيَدِهِ إِنَّهُمَا لَأَثْقَلُ فِي الْمِيزَانِ مِنْ جَبَلِ أُحُدٍ You are laughing at how thin it is by the qasam of that being in whose hands lies the life of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. These shins of Ibn Mas'ud will be more weighty in the court of Allah than the mountain of Uhud even. Weight in Allah's court is not dependent on the things of this world. Weight in Allah's court is dependent on a'mal, is dependent on sifat, is dependent on qualities. Allah's Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made that effort, made that effort on sahaba ikram, men and women, that each one could take directly from the treasures of Allah. One woman comes to Medina Munawwara with her young son, it was a practice in Medina Munawwara when the delegations would come. She is sent to some females among the Sahaba to teach her deen. Her son is sent to the males among Sahaba to teach him deen. The environment of Medina does not agree with her son. He becomes ill. Then he passes away. His janaza is prepared. Allah's Rasul says, send for his mother. She comes. Anas radiallahu ta'ala who is the narrator of the hadith, he says, Ajuz and Amya, an elderly woman who was blind, blind and elderly. She comes into the majlis of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She can't even see. She has a desire in her heart. She has a call in her heart. She has a pain in her heart. She's carrying some burden in her heart. In front of her is the Rasul of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In front of her is Abu Bakr, in front of her is Umar, in front of her is Usman, is Ali, radiallahu anhum, and the galaxy of Sahaba. Yet, a new Muslim, few days in Medina Munawwara, she does not request any one of them to make dua. She doesn't request any one of them to make dua, she herself makes dua. Such was the environment of Medina Munawwara. Such was the vibrant environment of Iman that Allah's Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made such an effort on Sahaba Ikram that each one learned to take directly from Allah. Each one's ta'alluq with Allah was developed like that. She goes down onto her knees, feels the feet of her son. Allahumma inni aslamtu laka taw'an wa khala'tu al-awthana zuhdan wa hajartu ilayka raghbatan fala tushmit bi abadad al-awthan wa la tuhammilni min hadhihi al-musiba ma la taqata li bihamliha she says oh allah i accepted islam willingly i gave up idol worship i gave up every form of shirk with shock with inclination i made hijrat in your way i strove in your path with raghbat Oh Allah, I have come to Medina for what? To gain deen. Why? Because I want to go back to my people. I want to give them Islam. I want them to be safe from Jahannam. I want them to go to Jannah. This was the... When Sahaba, men, women, children, when they accepted Iman, automatically, the, the concern of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi transmitted itself into them. Each one was imbibed with the fikr and concern for humanity. 
that how this humanity can be saved from Jahannam and go to Jannah. How this humanity can be introduced to Allah. How this humanity can understand the beauty that the personality of Janabi Rasulullah represents. And for that they gave everything. Her son has died, she's making dua. What is the crux of a dua? Not, Ya Allah, you took my son away. He's so young, no one will support me. No! Ya Allah, you took my son away when I go back to my people to tell them about you and tell them about Islam and tell them about your Rasul. They are going to mock at me. Your new religion cost the life of your son. What Islam are you going to come to tell us about? Her concern is not the loss of her child. Her concern is the obstacle this will become to the tabligh of this deen. New Muslim, few days of Islam, such was the environment of Medina Munawara, such was the effort that Rasulullah Pak Salaam made upon them. That the whole goal, the whole maqsad of their existence changed. Insaniyat, humanity must be saved from Jahannam and go to Jannat. Compassion, concern, the cry and pain of humanity in the heart. Ya Allah, you took my son, this will become an obstacle. Anas radiallahu anhu says, barely she finished her dua and her son removed the coffin cloth from his body. He stood up, he lived through the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, through the life of Abu Bakr, through the Khilafat of Umar and he became shaheed in the time of Usman Ghani radiallahu ta'ala. New Muslim, such value, such weight they had in the court of Allah, when they would raise their hand, the arsh of Allah would shake. Such an environment existed in Madinah Munawwara. Coming back to what we are saying, that Allah in whose eyes this entire world is not equal to the wing of one mosquito, when Allah says, if you see my Jannat, if you see my Jannat, you will see a vast kingdom. Jibreel Amin, it is said from the head to the toe of this one angel is a distance of 14,000 years. 600 wings, one wing he opens, the whole east will be blotted. One wing he opens, the whole west will be blotted. Jibreel says, I traveled for years and years and years in Medane Mazid, one plane of Jannat, and he said, I could not finish the one plane of Jannat. Such a Jannat, such a Jannat. When the Sahabi hears this, he looks at Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Awa ma will my eye see this Jannat that is described in these verses of the Quran? Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, yes, you are a Jannati. When he hears this, there and then he passes away on the spot. Allah's Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam addresses his companions and he says, Laqad akhraja nafsa sahibikum ashawku ilal jannah. The shawk, the inclination, the raghbat, the desire for jannah has taken the life of your companion. Akhirat was a reality, jannah was a reality, such a reality that Ali radiallahu ta'ala used to say, Law kushif al ghita, law kushif al ghita, mazdat to imana, if jannah and jahannam had to be brought in front of us. We saw it with our eyes, we had heard about it from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, now we saw it with our eyes, Ali says our iman would not increase, we have more conviction on what we heard from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam than what our own eyes are showing us. That was, that was ishq of Rasulullah Pak Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That was love of Rasulullah Pak Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That was ghulami of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. My respected brothers, this little bit of harkat that is taking place, especially in this Mubarak month of Ramadan, Jamaat's going out in the path of Allah. The goal and object of it is this. It is no movement, or no organization, or there's no political agenda. One cry, one concern, that how we can bring our lives on such a pattern that will please Allah and His Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. How we can become the true friends of Allah. How we can recognize the true love of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. How Allah can use us as a source of benefit, as a source of mercy to this entire humanity that is thirsty out there and that is waiting for us to bring this message of concern, to bring this message, to link one one person to Allah and His Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. For this, my respected brothers, Allah's Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, on this I will terminate. He said, Man saama yawman, man saama yawman, fi sabilillah, fi ghayri Ramadan. He said that person who will fast one day, one day while striving in the path of Allah, not in Ramadan, not in Ramadan. He said, Fi Ramadan, outside Ramadan. Nafil fast, nafil fast. 
outside Ramadan in the path of Allah Bu'ida anin nar Mi'ata amin Sayr al mudhammar al jawad He said a fast horse rider will ride for 100 years The distance that he will cover That distance Allah will distance this person from Jahannam For fasting one day in the path of Allah outside Ramadan What will Allah give him if he will fast in the path of Allah in Ramadan? My respected brothers, we don't know if we live to see another Ramadan. This is where we are supposed to be competing. The field is open. This is the time, my respected brothers, to reap the harvest of Akhirat.